Whoa, I'm getting flashbacks from Vlogmas. I just sat down to read and I just remembered that I don't have a bookmark. Now kiss! <laughs> Whoa. Shit has hit the fan. Hello everyone. Um, today I'm doing a very impromptu 24 hour thong. I always say thong. It's a 24 hour thong. Not underwear, not thong. Thong. <laughs> Basically, if you don't know what that is, it's where I try and read as much as I can for 24 hours. But that's not really how it's gonna go down. In the past, it has gone down like that and I can read like five books in 24 hours. Don't even ask me how I do it, I don't know. Um, but today I'm gonna just try and read two books. I don't even know if I'm gonna finish both of them. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to do anything tomorrow apart from sleep because depression is a bitch. But I have picked two books out from my December TBR to try and get read today because a bunch of us are doing a 24 hour readathon to kind of like not catch up with the Goodreads goal because I'm actually ahead of my Goodreads goal, but to just kind of like read. I don't know. I feel like I've just been in a really big reading slump these past few weeks in December. I feel like I haven't read as much as I wanted to. I've read Heritage Anonymous by Katie Henry. I've read one of the Mortal Instruments graphic novels which I got for my birthday, the first one. And then yesterday I DNF'd Dear Evan Hansen after reading a lot of it. But for some reason I thought I would be reading more. I don't know. So <laughs> I've picked out two books that I really wanted to read this month that I don't think I'm going to get a chance to read, especially this one. Because there's only two books, I feel quite confident about being able to finish them in one day. I finished this in one day before. I'm pretty sure for Rune of Seasons Winter last year about this time last year. I'm not sure about birthday. I'm not even sure what this is about other than I think it's about two trans people who have the same birthday. I'm not sure. I'm reading this for the Greenathon. This is the last book in the Greenathon. Um, so if you want to take part, then it's not too late. I'm just reading it really early on. We've only just started reading it really. We started on the 15th um, and now it's 17th technically. So it's only been two days and I want to finish it already because I need to get my reviews up before the end of the year. So my plans for today slash tomorrow, because I haven't slept yet, so it's not tomorrow yet, is to read all day and to also film some videos and some TikToks. Basically what I've done today but adding reading into the equation. Let it snow is 354 pages, which will take me about three and a half hours. And then birthday is exactly 300 pages. So all in all, I'll be reading for about seven hours, six and a half, seven hours-ish. So that's actually not that long compared to the amount of time I have. So I could either start now and wake up later tomorrow, or I could go to sleep now and wake up early tomorrow morning and get reading done because I'm only going to be reading for like six hours tomorrow I just want to get these two done I don't want to get anything else done because maybe I will I don't know but yeah so I'm going to be reading Birthday and Let It Snow just because I felt like it and I don't think I'm going to be able to read this unless I do a 24 hour readathon that's about it there's a bunch of us in a group chat let me read out some people's names because I feel like I need to I don't know why it was made by Michaela there's 33 people in here I didn't realise there was that many people Emmett Stories I think uh, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Bookishly Brie, That Disney Chick, King Karen, that's such a good username, Night Owl Sherry, or Night Owl underscore Sherry, sorry, Asparagus Reading, that's such a good name as well. Wendy, I can't pronounce your username, Castellian Tales, Pages and Peaches, Zoe, Halfway to It Blog, Lisa Marie Reads, Who Likes Killer Swift, which I'm down for, Elfie Riverdale, Books and Cars, interesting, La Morde Books, Michaela reads, bookish underscore stars, Kerry reads, um, Wondercat, Catherine books two, Kate reads, Cassidy reads, Haley, Cat underscore reads, Sasha underscore reads, Butterflies on, Hyped Hufflepuff, Book Dragon Brie, Books with Abby, Book Addict, I am Lindsay 401, Knox reads, and then me. Mwah. So yeah, those are all the people in the group chat, and if any of you are currently watching this, then hello. Welcome to my channel. I am really undecided whether I'm going to start these now or sleep. I kind of want to read now. Is that a bad decision? It might be. I also don't know which one I'm going to read first. I'm thinking birthday because I've already read Let It Snow. So I almost dropped it. So I'm thinking birthday. Also, look at this motherfucking page spraying action. That is just magical like are you fucking kidding me but yeah i'm gonna start birthday and i will let you know how i feel about it on the back it says 
Meet Eric and Morgan, born on the same day, at the same time, in the same place. Very unlikely, unless they're twins. They've always shared this one day together, but as they grow up, they begin to grow apart. Everyone expects Eric to get a football scholarship, but no one knows he's having second thoughts. Former quarterback Morgan feels utterly alone as she wrestles with the difficult choice to live as her true self. Both of them are struggling to be the person they know they are. Who better to help than your best friend? I'm going to get so emailed at this. I know for a fact I am. So why not just dive right in also side note before i do dive in i got a new tattoo today yes that's lisa simpson in the background don't fucking you dare make fun of me yeah i got a new tattoo today uh, technically yesterday because it's 12 a.m now it's a little rtd toe the best droid ever <laughs> i just sat down to read and i just remembered that i don't have a bookmark great start <laughs> I am currently on page 92 of birthday and A, I'm loving this book. B, they just mentioned Pan's Labyrinth, one of my favourite movies ever. I started Pan's Labyrinth the other day, but who wants to read a movie? I mean, there is a book of it over there. I mean, you could just, you could just do that. But yeah, thought I'd mention that because it's literally my favourite movie. One of my favourite movies anyway. Good morning, everyone. It is currently... 10 a.m. Um, and I fell asleep last night after, where is my book? Where, where is that? Okay, it's on the floor. Last night I got to page, I think 106, 107 of Birthday by Meredith Russo um, because I just felt really tired all of a sudden and decided that I wanted to go to sleep for a bit. And now I've woken up, um, I'm gonna get some more reading done. But first I wanna get some breakfast and a good old cup of tea because I'm feeling on the tired side this morning. The weather's not very good outside, but it's perfect weather for reading. I actually am really enjoying this so far. Um, Meredith Russo always has been one of those writers who has an amazing writing style and great book ideas as well. This is all about two boys called Eric and Morgan. Um, Eric is a football player for the football team and he's getting kind of at the moment swept up on that and then we have Morgan who is going through gender dysphoria they really would like to transition into being a girl but it's very difficult for them to actually initially come out so that can be a possibility we have perspectives from both Morgan and Eric and it is just so adorable to see Morgan's like dysphoria and say like, Eric will never accept me, I'm gonna be alone forever, etc. And then in Eric's perspective, he then says, I will support Morgan in whatever that they do and I will love them no matter what. Because at first Eric thinks that Morgan's gay, but Morgan's not, they're trans. Eric just is so wholesome, but Morgan in their point of view is questioning that and like, it's just, it's just so well done um, and so clever as well. I thought that this story taking place every year on the same day on their birthday, both of them because they were born on the same day, I thought that that would get a bit repetitive and a bit boring, but it's happened twice now. Um, I am only that much into it. Well, I say only, that is quite a big dent that I read at like one o'clock this morning. But I thought that was going to get boring, but it hasn't. Like, I just feel like I know these characters so well. They are currently on their 14th birthday. It looks like they got to their 18th birthday. So we're following them from their 13th birthday to their 18th birthday and I'm only on 14th right now and my god I love this book so much. Although I'm not trans and I don't wish to transition, I find Morgan's character so relatable in the fact that I used to think, I, well, I do still think I'm bi but I came out when I was 15 um, so this is just like so relatable to me. I felt and like thought the same things about my bisexualness and just thought that no one ever would ever accept me and now here I am, I've been out for like, what, five years? So I just relate to Morgan so much and Eric is such a sweetheart defending Morgan against everything and like not letting slurs be used against them and even his own family, he's standing up for them. There's also a B plot of Eric's dad at the moment. I'm not sure if this is a spoiler, but it's very minor at the moment. I'm not sure how much this will have an impact. Once I read the whole book, I might edit this out if it's like a big spoiler. But at the moment, there's a B plot of Eric's dad being hella abusive and hella manipulative and their mum going through some stuff as well. So I'm really like just interested to see how that pans out and how that has an effect on Eric and Morgan's friendship. And also Peyton, Eric's brother is a bastard. Like I don't like Peyton. Although this whole B plot is making me feel a little bit sorry for him because no matter what he does for their, for their father, 
he can't impress him and he's always gonna get like abused at the end of the day and it's just so heartbreaking but eric is still this little bead of light and i saw some things in him during this like birthday this chapter in his points of views i'm still on the 14th I've only got a little bit left until 15th birthday. I'm just seeing some things and decisions that he's making surrounding like parties, girls, drinking, the football games, etc. Like the whole laddish culture that is going to like maybe sway him in a different way. So I'm scared about that and hopefully that doesn't happen. But you never know, Meredith Russo might pull through. She might write as a happy ending, probably not. But yeah, so I am absolutely loving this so far. I think this book is still absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I love Eric and Morgan so much. Like, living in their points of views has been hard. Don't get me wrong, it has been really difficult because some of the things they say between points of views is so frustrating. It's like, why don't you say that to each other? Why are you saying this to me? It's like being that third friend trying to get two people together like in a relationship you're just like now kiss <laughs> their relationship is so authentic even their friendship is so authentic as well uh and they're so relatable and i really really just love 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 them to pieces i'm gonna go downstairs and get some breakfast it is almost 10 o'clock and i have 13 hours to get six slash seven hours of reading done which i think is pretty doable um, especially when i'm loving this so much and i could not put it down last night and the only reason why i went to sleep was I was, my eyes just couldn't stay open anymore because I'd been up the entire day. I'm just so excited to read the rest of this. <laughs> now this is giving me flashbacks to Vlogmas. <laughs> can never tell what these are, no idea. Eat more sleep for Christmas. Whoa. Feels slow, man. I am currently on page 200 exactly and my god shit has hit the fan. Meredith why would you ruin these characters for me? Why would you ruin them? Eric is still such a little soft bean like I love Eric so much but Morgan is rightfully so. They are currently trying to be more masculine like everyone expects them to be um and like suppressing the feelings of actually wanting to be a woman and right now they're being very violent and not the morgan i fell in love with at the beginning of the book <laughs> i feel so bad i'm on 16th birthday right now and i am very close to the end i've got 100 pages left and i kind of don't want to read it because i know that's gonna upset me and I know that these characters are going to transform. I love this book. This book is so good. I just finished birthday and I'm not going to lie. I cried at the end. Like it was just so good. And it just had everything that I wanted in it. And the ending was perfect. I think it ended in the exact way it needed to. With a good book, you have to have an A plot and a B plot. This had A plot, B plot, C plot, D plot. It had so much going on with it. And it never was too much to keep up with either. It was all very well done, very easy to follow, easy to read, and just an amazing book overall. But I really do relate with the struggles in here despite not being trans. So I gave it a 4.5 because it really left a lasting impression on me. If you are trans, I would highly recommend reading this, but please be careful because there are a lot of heavy subjects covered in this. They are dealt with respect and authenticity because Meredith Russo herself is a trans woman. It isn't a case of bad rep, but you may be harmed while reading this. And I feel like your own safety and well-being is more important than any book that you could ever read. My personal trigger warnings for this would be death of a parent, transphobia, homophobia, gender dysphoria, suicide sex if you're uncomfortable with the idea of sex and like bodies and puberty and stuff just be careful no matter what you're triggered by if you're triggered by anything this book although it is really good and deals with these things with respect dignity and from what i can tell realism it does have some triggering moments and carries some triggering subjects as well so please 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 be careful while reading it. Although I want a lot of people to read this, trans people included, it does again deal with some subject matters that might make you feel 
uncomfortable or unsafe. I would also recommend this to people who are cis or just not trans. I really, really think that it could change some things in this world and with the political climate we're living in now, I really would recommend to anyone who is a bit confused about people who are trans, learning a little bit more about their struggles and what it means to go through these things and to, you know, live in a body that you don't feel like is your own. Eric deals with these things in such a way that I aspire to and I feel like a lot of people in the real world could learn by you know I feel like Eric is just amazing and he's probably my favorite character in this whole thing the one thing that I don't really understand about this book is that Morgan says that she is going to start taking hormones and changing her name and seeing how she feels but we never actually get to see her new name and she is called Morgan throughout the rest of the book despite having said that she's going to change her name maybe it was just like an unspoken rule for Meredith to not make Morgan change her name after all but it would have been nice to see um what her name would have been and what she was comfortable with calling herself and having others refer to her so I could you know address her in the right way it feels kind of weird to be calling her Morgan still because of the struggles that she faced during the book as Morgan but trans people aren't forced to change their names they don't have to if they're comfortable with their names which I think that most people aren't um they change them but it did seem a little bit weird how Morgan said that she wanted to change her name and then end up didn't it didn't happen I did uh see some continuity errors during the book as well in one section where Morgan and Eric first fall in love with each other with the tree Eric describes Morgan's eyes as brown the first time and then the second time he revisit that memory and Eric's remembering it and he's sad that he's like being distanced from Morgan he says that her eyes are blue and then we see the memory again for the third time in Eric's point of view and he says they're brown again. And I don't know if it's just because I'm getting confused with the points of views because to be honest, the points of views are quite similar. You can tell that Morgan is more feminine, but that's kind of about it. It might have been a, something to do with um, Morgan remembering that memory, but I attach it to Eric's point of view because Eric is the person who introduced it. I'm not sure, maybe I got confused and it's Eric that has the blue eyes. But from what I remember, Eric is describing Morgan and says that she's got light eyes. And then in the other two times, she's got brown eyes. And then at the end, she's got brown eyes again. It was really confusing. Um, and I did actually find just small bits of continuity errors, which is again, why it couldn't reach five stars. But it did get 4.5 and I enjoyed myself so, so so much. I absolutely loved it. Hello, it is like a week almost after I filmed this frigging vlog. I'm sorry, I don't know how to end vlogs on the same day. I'm uploading this tomorrow and so I decided to cut the vlog here because I actually didn't end up finishing Let It Snow. I ended up DNFing it because I was just so bored. So we're gonna have to learn more about that in my Greenathon review, which I'll be posting very, very soon. Um, but I decided to kind of keep this vlog a little bit positive because I really liked the way that it turned out before I started bashing Let It Snow. I thought it was gonna be really funny, me bashing it and stuff, but it was really relaxing the way I edited it and the way it turned out that I decided to just cut it out and leave it. Um, so I'm sorry about that. If you're looking forward to that, then I'm sorry, but I did end up <laughs> DNF in Let It Snow at page like 100 and that's gonna be really awkward to talk about in the, in the review but never mind. I had a lot of fun filming the 24 hour fun vlog and I think it's like a new way to do book reviews because I feel like I know a lot of my feelings still about Birthday. I know that it was a good book and I really enjoyed myself while reading it. I enjoyed everything about it as you can probably tell by my, my other clips but it was a really good way, like a new way of reviewing books and I had a really fun time editing once I got around to it and also filming as well. So if you want more of these, like this style of reviews in the future, then give me a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments because I really enjoyed filming and I hope that you enjoyed watching. If you did enjoy, give this video a massive thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I make videos every Sunday. For now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye! Honkin' spot, honkin' spot.